friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a card using this brand new set from Pretty Pink Posh called Sea Friends. And I'm going to be doing a little bit more of a detailed card. So we're going to dive right in with our Copic coloring. So I'm going to start out with the dolphin there on the left. And I'm going to color him in some blue greens just for something different. I thought that would be fun as compared to the traditional gray. So I'm using BG11, BG13, and BG15. Don't be confused by that cap. I know the BG13 looks darker than the BG15, but the actual marker is lighter. It's the mid-tone here. So I'm starting out with that BG15, and I'm just laying in all my shadows where I want those to go. And then I'm going to grab that BG13 and just catch the edge of the BG15 and kind of blend that out a bit. Now because this is a larger image, um, sometimes on larger images I do like to work lightest to darkest just because um, if the paper is a little bit saturated first, it's easier to blend. Um, I chose not to do that today, so I did have a bit of a difficult time when I got to the BG11 here trying to blend that out. But I just worked over everything really well, going back and forth, um, trying not to oversaturate the paper because then you'll bleed out of the lines, but just blending out that edge. Um, but if you have trouble um, when you work darkest to lightest on these larger images, you can definitely switch and work lightest to darkest and then back down again. Also, it can be helpful to work in small areas, so I could have done just his tail and then just his body and then just his fin, his dorsal fin there, um, but I chose to just go ahead and do the whole thing, but like I said, if you have trouble, um, you can try to switch it up and, and try different things to see what works for you. I also did decide to add in a fourth shade, the BG10, just for the center area as my lightest. I just thought that would brighten it up a bit. I did let that dry for just a minute and then I added a bit of dot detail just on the shaded parts of the dolphin's body. I thought that just gave him a little bit more personality and uh, just made him seem a little more realistic. And I did that with my darkest two shades, the BG13 and the BG15. Moving on to my seahorse, I'm using BG70, BG72, BG75 and BG78 and again I'm starting darkest to lightest. This is a much smaller image so it's easy to blend this way. So I just laid in my darkest shadows with the BG78 and now I'm just catching the edge of that with the BG75. Just kind of blending that out a little bit. I want to keep plenty of room for my lightest shade for his body which is the BG72. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest with that. Um, since these are quite dark shades with a lot of uh, gray in them, I wanted to make sure that I kept the darkest limited and left a lot of light space for that BG72. I'm also using the BG72 as my darkest shade for the rest of his body. So I'm just kind of putting a little line there where the lines are drawn on the image just to kind of reinforce those. And then I'm blending everything out with the BG70. And then just let that dry again like a minute or so and add my dot detail with the BG78. For my starfish, I'm using R22, R24, and R29. I'm actually starting with my lightest shade just to kind of give me some direction. I wanted to be careful not to make him too dark. I'm going for kind of like a pinky red kind of corally color and I just didn't want to get carried away. Um, but now I know where I'm going to add my darkest. I went ahead and did that. I jumped straight to the darkest with the R29 and now I'm taking the R24 and just blending that out a bit. And then I can grab my R22 and just fill everything else back in. I'm leaving that center area where his little eyes and mouth are um, to, for the last so that it doesn't get too dark. I'm also going to color that fish on the top right with the same three shades. I had a very specific color palette in mind for this card. So I was really limiting myself to only five different colors to use, uh, you know, with a couple shades of each color, you know, for each image. 
but just five colors um, on the entire coloring portion of the card. Um, so I had to really get creative when I got to the small details, but sometimes I find it fun to challenge myself in that way and just, um, I think it creates a, a more uniform look. It's definitely fun to color everything in all different shades, but um, sometimes it can be, I don't know, I like a challenge. <laughs> I think it's fun to kind of like just limit yourself sometimes and see what you can do. I added a little bit of dot detail and then moved on to this conch shell. I did pull in the R20 just to add some variation to that pinky red shade, um, but still use the R22 as my darkest. I added a rosy cheek to my dolphin with the R20 and tried it on the seahorse as well, but it wasn't quite dark enough, so I just pulled back in that R22. The next color that I'm introducing into my palette is orange, so I'm using YR04, YR07, and YR09, and just starting darkest to lightest, so I'm using my YR09 for my shadow, the YR07 for the midtone, and the YR04 for my lightest shade. It's going to be my highlight. And then I'll color in my last little fish with the same three shades. And I'm just keeping the shadow towards the back of his body and his face will be the lightest portion just so you're really able to see it clearly. The fifth color in my palette here is going to be green so I'm just using YG05 and YG09 to color in my little sea grasses here just so that there's a nice pop of contrast against the red and the orange and the pretty aqua blues. And now that I have my main images and my color palette laid out, I can go back and finish off the little details using the same aqua blue that I used for the dolphin on this shell. And then these same darker blue greens that I used for the seahorse, I'll use on my last little shell here. I also did end up realizing later on that I needed a few more images, so I did stamp and color one more of each of the shell, the coral, and the seagrass. But I decided to do that off camera since this video is already pretty long. Moving on to our background, I've got a couple of distressings here. This is shabby shutters, peacock feathers, and pine needles. And I'm working on a piece of Bristol smooth surface paper. I'm going to take that shabby shutters and kind of make a little oval shape in the very center. And then I'm going to surround that with the peacock feathers. And this is the reason that I'm working on the Bristol Smooth Surface. Because it has that vellum coating, it takes a lot longer for the ink to soak into the paper. So you really have a lot of time to um, play and move your color around. And it doesn't leave any harsh lines at all. You can blend everything back out as long as you know you work relatively quickly. Um, but you definitely have way more time than you do on regular cardstock or even watercolor paper. So now I'm taking that pine needles and I'm working my way out from the edge and just darkening that up. I'm going to build up in layers until I have a look that I'm going for. And I'm just using a piece of post-it paper to kind of keep my fingers off, but because this is that vellum coating, it's really easy to leave fingerprints and kind of lift that ink off the paper. Um, as you can see down on the edge, even where I'm holding the paper, it is um, pulling it up a bit. But it's it's going to be fine. I'm going to cover that up in a minute. But um, it's a lot easier to hold it with the paper than it is to try to hold it with your fingers and keep your fingerprints from leaving marks. So anyway, I'm just going back over each shade until I've built up the color to the place that I want it. Just leaving that halo effect, kind of going from the green in the center until the blue and then the darker green around the edge. Once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to grab my Distress Sprayer and spritz that a couple of times and kind of blot off the water so that I have a nice spattered effect. And sometimes if I get too carried away, I like to go back in with just the excess ink that's right on the blender. I don't even add any more from the ink pad, but um, just add that back over top and kind of soften out that water effect. And you can go back and forth a few times until you're happy with the results. And then I'll just set that panel aside to dry. 
going to take my card base, and this is Lawn Fawn's Narwhal cardstock, and I'm going to use my Pretty Pink Posh Stitch Duo 3 dies to die cut a window right into my card base. So I just opened that up and ran it through my cuddle bug, and now I've got this nice big window. So my idea for this card was um, to be looking through this little underwater cove, almost as if this is the gate to an ancient civilization that's underwater now, like, like Atlantis or something like that. So I'm just taking a W5 marker and kind of distressing the edges of this, trying to put some little cracks in it and make it look just a little bit more like a, like a cove. And uh, I'm not doing anything fancy, just letting the marker kind of do the work, just drawing little cracks and crannies here until I've covered the entire surface. Then I'm going to grab some pumice stone distress ink and I'm going to just reinforce that aged look by going around the edges of just the front of the card with that. So I'm just going all around the outside edges and then I will um, fold the card at the spine so I don't get it on the back there. And then I can open the card again and I'm going to go in from the inside edge of the window as well. So it looks like that ancient piece of rock that's been there a long time. And now you can see how these two pieces are going to work together. So I'm going to leave that distress panel tucked inside so that I can go ahead and glue down my images and make sure that I get them placed exactly where I want them to be. So starting with this dolphin, I'm just going to adhere him down on the left side using some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. And then I'm also going to add my little seahorse down to the right of him. These two are going to be my main focal images. So once I have those placed exactly where I want them, then I can start to build my scene around them. And I love using Tombow Mono Multi Glue for adhering images because you do have that little bit of wiggle room to be able to adjust. As you saw, I just moved that dolphin there. So now I'm just going to add some of the images on the front of the little window and then some tucked behind just so it kind of creates this layered effect. But I'm being careful um, to the ones that I am adding on top of the window. I want to make sure only to add glue just where the, um, the gray cardstock is. I don't want any glue in the center because it would um, stick to the distress panel and then my card wouldn't open. So I'm just going to keep flipping it back and forth, opening and closing until I have my scene created. I'm making sure that some of my elements kind of poke through so you can see that there's more to the scene behind. And then other elements I want to tuck around the edges where you won't be able to see them from the front, just so you have a little more visual impact when you open the card up. And now you can also see why I needed to stamp and color just a couple more of these little detail images just so I could kind of fill in that scene on the bottom of the inside of the card. So once this is done, I'm going to pop it into my Misty and grab a sentiment from another brand new set from Pretty Pink Posh. This is the Bear Hugs. And I'm going to ink up the sentiment that says, Hello Friend, with some Lawn Fawn Blue Jay ink. And thank God for the Misty because I was able to uh, push it down again and re-stamp that and have it come out perfectly. And then I also did ink that up a second time just to make it a little bit bolder and crisper. And then I'm going to grab a bunch of these little tiny bubble clusters from the Sea Friends stamp set. And I'm going to ink those up using some Lawn Fawn Peacock ink. I want these to kind of blend a little bit more into the background and just be kind of a subtle accent to fill in some of the spaces here. So there's like three different clusters that I've put on this little block. So I'm just going to stamp out the different ones a few different times and kind of flip them around so that it looks a little bit different and mixes things up a bit. While I have my Misty out, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the inside of my card. It's just something I always like to do. So I'm going to use the Whale and the Splash Marks from the Sea Friend stamp set, and then the Your Awesome Sentiment from the Bear Hug stamp set. 
So I'm just using the Lawn Fawn Hippo ink and I'm going to stamp that twice to get a nice crisp impression. So now I'm grabbing my Martha Stewart mini scoreboard and I'm going to score about 3 eighths of an inch from the top of this panel. Just making sure to give it a really nice uh, crisp score line there so it can fold easily. And then I'm going to grab some score tape and this is the quarter inch score tape so it's going to fit perfectly on that little uh, edge that we've created for ourselves. I love this tape because it's really easy to tear off. I'm just going to burnish that down with my finger real quick and then I can peel off that release paper and then I'm going to just make sure that this is lined up really straight inside my card. Then I can just press that down firmly and I'll also use my bone floater to just make sure that that's really well secured. So you can see that this card is going to have three little sections there. You're going to have the front with the window and then the panel with all our images and then you still have the place to sign on the inside. So even with all we've got going on here, I still felt like the card needed just a little something extra. So I grabbed my favorite crystal stickles and I'm going to add a little detail here and there. I don't like to fill anything in. I like to kind of dot it on and use it more of an accent. Um, and as a bonus, it kind of dries quicker. But it also kind of draws your eye around the card because it just um, catches the light here and there instead of just being like full coverage in your face. So. I'm just going to dot that here and there all over. Um, I like to kind of go in the um, the shadowed areas. I feel like that's a good place where um, to kind of emphasize the little bits of sparkle there. So I'll just go ahead and add that all around until I'm happy with how it looks. And that is going to complete our card for today. There's a close up look at all that pretty sparkle and a peek at all three layers of our card. And I'll just grab a couple of acrylic blocks to prop up that window until everything dries. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was a bit of a longer video, so I hope you enjoyed the kind of in-depth coloring and different techniques that we combined into this card. If you did like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that I know that you're interested in more videos like these. Here's an extra couple videos you may also enjoy and you can always click on my photo to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye bye.